Drew drives 200 miles in the same amount of time it takes Nancy to drive 150 miles. If Drew drives 15 miles per hour faster than Nancy, find Drew's speed and Nancy's speed. So in this problem, we need to come to this class understanding this formula that is commonly known as distance equals rate times time. So I remember it as like dirt, dirt, except for it doesn't have the I. All right, anyways, so this formula here, you see all over the place. You may not think about it, but when you see a speed sign when you're driving, it's telling you how far you go, how many miles you go per hour. So when you see a speed sign that says 25 miles, it's saying that the distance you'll go is 25 miles if your speed, so your R is your speed, so if you're driving at 25 miles and then your time is 1. So in one hour, your distance here, 25 times 1 is 25. So in one hour, you go 25 miles. And then your distance, if you drive two hours instead of one hour, your distance is going to be 50. So in two hours, 50 miles. So that's how this formula here works. You take however your speed is and multiply it by how long, and that gets you how far you travel. So if D is the distance a car travels, T is the time, and R is how fast you're going, your speed, then we know that distance equals rate times time. So if we take a look at this equation here, it says Drew drives 200 miles in the same amount of time it takes Nancy to drive 150 miles. So they gave us the distance both people go. So they told us that Drew's distance, D, is 200, and Nancy's distance is 150. Then it says, if Drew drives 15 miles per hour faster, so Drew, his speed, is 15 more than this person. So R is going to be, so I'm going to let R is going to be Nancy speed. Okay, so Drew is the speed of Nancy plus 15. And it says, find Drew's speed and Nancy's speed. So if you look, both equations have a T here. They match up. So if I were to divide by R plus 15, then I would have 200 over R plus 15 equals T over here. And then over here, if I divide by R, then I'd have 150 over R equals T. And then because they equal the same thing, we could then substitute. We could plug this in for that since they both are set equal to T. So in other words, I could take both of these and set them equal because they're both T, like this. And then I could solve this equation. So this is explaining to you why this works. The simple way to set it up is kind of like the example or kind of like the way we did in example one and two where we set it up proportional. So here we have Drew. This is Drew and this is Nancy. And we're going to set it up in a proportion where Drew drives 200 miles and his speed per R plus 15 because he drives or he drives 15 miles per hour faster. And then Nancy is 150 
per whatever her speed is. So you could also set it up just by setting it up proportional. Okay, now to solve this we have two options. Since we have one fraction equal to one fraction, we could use cross products like this. We could do 200R equals, and then we could do 150 times R plus 15. So if that was your thought, you're good. You can do it that way. However, this chapter focuses on finding a common denominator. So another way to do this is to look at the denominators and find a common denominator. Now R plus 15 is together. So the common denominator here, the LCD, is R and R plus 15. So whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we're going to multiply both sides by R and R plus 15. Now what happens here is this R cancels out with this R and we're left with 150 and R plus 15. On this side, this will cancel out with this, and we're left with 200 and the R. Now we're going to simplify. We have variables on both sides, so I need to get rid of one of them. Okay, so we get that R is 45. So since we get R is 45, if we go back here, R represents Nancy's speed. So we would say that Nancy's speed, her speed right here, is 45 miles per hour. Drew's speed is 15 more, so 70 miles per hour. Whoops, made a mistake, that should be 60. So Drew's speed is 60 miles per hour and Nancy's speed is 45 miles per hour.